is the Bitcoin bottom and is the worst of the sell-off over? Is it time for the markets to start recovering? Well, in this video, I want to share some technical indicators that say that, well, we may actually be finding that support that the bottom could actually be in. And I also have some interesting charts to share with you about who has been selling their Bitcoin and, of course, who has been buying up the Bitcoin that has been being sold. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that is a topic that you'd like to learn some more about, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click on the thumbs up button, and of course, click on the notification bell to know when I put out a new video. So let's go ahead and turn over to the charts. Now, the first thing I want to point out to you here on the charts is this just beautiful flipping of previous resistance in to support. Now, technically, this is a very bullish move. When we do see the price come back down to test a previous area of resistance, this was here around $42,000 approximately. That was the big area of resistance where Bitcoin topped out in early January, of course, before going on to find new highs later on. But we did see this actually coming back down here to now test it as an area of support. So we flipped $42,000 into support, which is nice to see. We also have the 200-day exponential moving average. Now, that is just a beautiful, beautiful bounce that we saw right there. Now, we have, you have to keep it fair, we have seen Bitcoin cutting through some moving averages. So this is not the be-all, end-all. These are just trend indicators. The 50-day moving average, the 100-day moving average have been cut through dramatically. So we are now seeing it bounce finally off of the 200-day exponential moving average. In theory, that should be a pretty good indicator of a bullish trend reversal. So we could see the price starting to come back up now from this uh, test of support here. Next, let's talk about the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. So we'll go ahead and pull it up here, drop, drop the EMA off just so we get a nice clear view on what's going on. We can see here that once again, the RSI has come back down and tested 30. So we saw this happen over here as well where the RSI came down, tested the bottom of basically the normal zone range. Anything below 30 starts to become the oversold region for an asset. So we actually saw it bounce just before the worst of that. Now we're actually, of course, heading back up from there. So will that have been the worst of it? Time will, of course, tell. But seeing an oversold reading during a bull market, that's not something that is, um, you know, without precedent. It's just not as common as, of course, we see overbought readings during a bull market. What we normally see is actually these kind of tests that we saw here. So again, this is a 2017 chart. So we saw a test of the bottom range of the purple box here on the RSI, testing basically the 30 level again here as well. Almost coming down to it here. And of course, it's going just a bit under it here back in August 2016. So what we're seeing again, nothing out of the ordinary in terms of uh, price action here on the RSI indicator. Of course, not all is rosy and cheery in Chartland. We are still right now trying to claw our way back above the 21-week exponential moving average. We can see that last week, yes, we did close just by a hair above the 21-week EMA. Right now, Bitcoin is below that. We still do have five and a half days for the weekly candle to close. A lot can happen in that time, so we could easily see this closing above it again Next week, obviously, that's what we really want to see happen. If the bulls fail to take control during this week and they can't regain momentum in the market and we do close below the 21-week exponential moving average, then I would expect we could see more pain coming into the market. But let's see if we can close. We have five and a half days to make this happen. Come on, guys. We can do it. We can do it. Hopefully, we do see that playing out in our favor. By the way, if you are a trader, then you need to check out Femex. It is the number one futures trading exchange in the market. Super user-friendly, great place to be trading Bitcoin futures, Ethereum futures, Cardano, Polkadot, Dogecoin, whatever your fancy might be. Right now, they're also doing an insane deposit 
bonus. Now, this is on top of the regular $150 bonus that you can get by using my links, just the first link down here in the description. So you get 10% off your fees using that link, plus $150 for doing things like making your first deposit, as well as doing your first trades. And they're also doing this massive bonus right now, bringing you up to $2,000 in trading bonuses. So all you have to do, sign up using that link down below in the description, and then deposit some Bitcoin. So if you deposit 0.01 Bitcoin, you will get $20 in bonuses all the way up to depositing two Bitcoin and getting $2,000 in bonuses. And of course, there's lots of different bonuses in between those two extremes. So if you are a trader, then check that out using the first link in the description. And so just who the frick has been selling their Bitcoin at these prices anyway? Well, it has mostly been short-term holders. Unfortunately, time and time again, we see the market acting as a mechanism to transfer money from the impatient over to the patient. We see new money coming in, buying the tops and selling the bottom. And it's just so obvious when you look at these charts. So this chart here shows the whole market's realized losses. Yes, the whole market does tend to sell off on big dips in the market, but it's much less extreme in terms of selling compared to the short term holders. So people who have been in the market for a lot less time tend to panic a lot more to think that, well, the 30 or 40% corrections in the bear market is here. It's all over or what realistically tends to happen quite a bit. They buy high and they sell low. That, of course, is not how winning is done. If anything, dips are for buying, not for panic selling, and certainly not for shorting. A lot of people wait to short the market until it hits the bottom, and then they're shorting support instead of longing support. Now, we can see here, this is quite dramatic. It's just very, very telling of general market behavior, the kind of behavior that gets you freaking wrecked. So what do we see here? We see a massive dip in the market, price coming right down, and what happens? People panic selling at a loss. So people who bought here at the top, 20, 30% later down, they're panic selling for a massive loss. Those same people probably rebuy up here and then panic sell down here. Again, we can see massive selling during this dip right here, massive selling at a loss, selling at a loss. That's the most important thing. This shows that people are selling at a loss here. And during the current dip, the one that we're experiencing right now at this very moment, people selling for a loss, people who bought at 60000 or $65,000, they are now selling their Bitcoin for a 30, 35% loss. Ouch, 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 ouch. That is not how winning is done long-term. Dips are for buying. You can see the behavior of long-term holders tends to be very different. They tend to add to their positions on dips. We did see, though, an incredible amount of inflows to exchanges. So we haven't seen these kind of inflows since we saw the plus token scammers offloading truckloads of cryptocurrencies back in June, September 2019. We also saw the one of the biggest uh, inflows ever to exchanges during the COVID sell-off. Again, people panic selling that bottom. And now we have, again, one of the biggest sell-off events ever, one of the biggest inflows to exchanges that we've seen in years of people panic selling the bottom of the market. Well, what we hope, of course, is the bottom. Nothing is for certain in the markets. We all look at our indicators and hope that we know what the heck is going on. But people are definitely panicking right now. We're seeing a lot of selling going on. This is largely going to be retail money. The big money investors, they're not likely to be panic selling at a 20, 30% loss. Those guys will have either sold at 60 or $55,000 and now are looking to reaccumulate or they're simply holding on their positions because they realize the Bitcoin is a six digit asset that's currently priced as a five digit asset and that you accumulate during dips, not panic sell during dips. It's also really interesting to see that even though we had massive inflows to uh, more retail focused exchanges like Binance, for example, that the transfer volume out of Coinbase was totally different. So Coinbase is where uh, institutions have primarily been going to buy their Bitcoin. So like MicroStrategy and uh, Tesla and a lot of the big US companies that have bought Bitcoin, they've all done it on Coinbase. And what do we see happening on Coinbase? Massive outflows of Bitcoin. And it's at a very different time compared to the short-term sellers, the short-term holders who are panic selling at a loss 
what do we see? When the price of Bitcoin drops, we tend to see massive spikes in buying by institutional money. We can see that happening here. We can see that happening to a much lesser extent here, actually. I'm surprised I didn't buy that dip very hard. But we see it happening here quite strongly. We see it happening on this dip as well, where institutions are stepping in and buying big amounts of Bitcoin on the dips. They're not panic selling, they're panic buying. And of course, we can see that evidenced here by the number of accumulation addresses for Bitcoin, which are currently on the rise. So these are addresses that have only ever added to their Bitcoin, not sold any Bitcoin. So they only have inflows, not outflows to their addresses. That number has gone up by around 6,000 addresses during this particular market dip. People are buying the dip this happens every time when we get a big dip like this. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, the current uh, correction, which got us down to around 35% at its lowest point, this is nothing out of the ordinary within a market cycle like this. To see these uh, tests of the 21-week exponential moving average, again, nothing out of the ordinary in these market cycles. And just one final thought to leave you with. This is from Rect Capital. Uh, Great guy to follow for technical analysis on uh, Bitcoin, altcoins. He's absolutely awesome. Make sure to go and follow him over on Twitter. Now, Rekt Capital said, bull markets tend to end whenever Bitcoin's price deviates beyond the stock to flow line. Bitcoin hasn't even deviated beyond the stock to flow line yet. So you can see here, let's bring that up a little bit more. This is when a bull market ends for Bitcoin. You can see right here, massive deviation. You can see here, massive deviation, massive deviation. For the bear markets, massive deviations under, massive deviations under. And where are we right now? Where are we right now? We're basically just tracking right along the line. We have not had that massive blow off top yet, which could come, you know, anytime by the end of 2021 or sometime in early 2022, according to how uh, a lot of prediction models are working right now. This isn't likely to be the end of the bull market. If it is weakest bull market ever, ending with a, a whimper and not a bang. And bull markets don't tend to end with a whimper. They tend to end quite dramatically with big old fancy bangs. And that is not what has happened yet for Bitcoin. So just some perspective there for you as well about what's going on in the market right now. Anyway, those are just my two Satoshis for the day. Your question, did you buy the dip? And if so, what price did you buy some Bitcoin at? Very curious to hear if you did buy some Bitcoin during the dip, or maybe you didn't buy any Bitcoin, maybe you bought some altcoins. If so, let me know down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video, and peace out till next time.